Today on the Transplant Help, we're going to be answering a viewer's question, which very simply stated is, Jim, will I be able to feel my heartbeat after transplant? Believe it or not, that is an outstanding question, one that I received over and over again. So I thought it would be appropriate if we sat down today via this video and let you know the answer and the truth about this subject. So stay tuned. Hey folks, welcome to Transplant Helper today. My name is Jim Burrell. Now before I get into actually answering the question, I want to pause for just a moment and give a shout out to my Facebook friend Fabiola, who has recently sent me out this awesome t-shirt. And that is the Heart Warrior t-shirt, which you can pick up if you'd like. Also, by going to her website, which I'm going to put right here on the screen, as well as in the show notes below. And you're not only going to get a t-shirt that helps to motivate you, but also supports a good cause. And generally what it's done with the excess funds that they gain from selling Selling these t-shirts and other products is they'll in turn give gifts to pediatric cardiology patients. So if you're an adult patient like me, you have a big space in your heart of love just for wanting to help a child. So if you want to go ahead and do that, go over to her website, look through all those products, pick you something out with a Heart Warrior logo, and you'll be supporting a wonderful and a wonderful cause. One that I'm backing 100% tonight just by showing you this awesome t-shirt. So with that said, let's jump right into our question right quick and answer it. And that was again, basically, Jim, will I be able to feel my heartbeat after transplant now you may think on the surface that might be a silly question you assume okay i'm going to be able to feel my heartbeat because i've got a new heart it's no different at least in some perspectives it's not a lot different at all from my old one but actually this question arises often because of a misunderstanding or a misconception about what happens during the transplant surgery. Now, the truth is that during the transplant surgery, as your old heart is removed, of course, making room for the new heart to be brought in, it is true that as they cut all those veins, vessels, and arteries away, they also cut away several, several groups or clusters of nerve endings. And those nerve endings are actually responsible for an awful lot as far as the general operation of the heart, but they are not responsible. I'll say that clearly again, they are not responsible for the way that you feel your heartbeat. But once those nerve endings are severed or cut, it is the case, but for a period after transplant, you will not be able to feel things like chest pains, particularly angina pains. If you're familiar with what that is, that can be a very severe pain that many of us suffer pre-transplant, and it comes as a result of the heart not getting enough oxygen, whether it be from narrowing or hardening arteries or, or the muscle itself, whatever. But nonetheless, you will not experience angina pain right after transplant and maybe even for a number of years just because of those nerve endings being severed. But that's not the main thing that this has to do with. Really, these nerve endings do a whole whole lot more as far as controlling our heart rates. Now, not our heartbeat that we feel, but our heart rates in that these nerve endings come from our brain down to our hearts and basically send down instructions like, okay, Jim is wanting to walk fast or Jim is wanting to jog or Jim is wanting to run. And it in turn tells our heart to speed up, to pump faster, to pump harder, to deliver more oxygenated blood throughout the body. On the other side of that, if you've had those nerve endings cut, which you will at transplant, it's all also the case that when you're in that cool down period after exercise, they're also responsible for telling your heart, okay, Jim has stopped running. He's backed off. Now he's now he's just walking and now he's in a seated position and so they also play a big role in bringing that heart rate back down so if you're like i was post transplant one of the most difficult and surprising things i didn't understand is that i would actually go out and walk uh, my, my laps around the unit what was being required of me and as i would go out and walk i noticed how difficult it was to get my heart rate up to get the energy to walk and then even more so once i was done with that walk no matter how long it was when I went to sit back down, it's like my heart was pounding out of my chest for minutes and minutes and minutes. And that was because of those nerve endings being cut. And so this the direction, if you will, for that heart speeding up and slowing down with exercise were simply not there. So if you want to see it in that way, as far as the pain goes on one side, and that's a good thing. You don't have to hurt. Of course, those pains are really instructions and warnings that there's a problem. And on the other side of that, yeah, I think like I did and many others do, you'll miss that heart rate going up and down a little bit more quickly 
then it will. But the question was, again, will I be able to feel my heartbeat after transplant? And the answer is yes. It is a resounding, resounding yes. And that is because you don't feel your heart beating right now because of nerve endings. Now, that, again, I've already told you what those nerve endings are supposed to be doing, but one thing they are not doing is telling your brain that your heart has gotten faster or your brain that your heart is beating harder. You know, sometimes pre-transplant, most of us, we get accustomed to the pounding heart rates, the racing heart rates, the slow heart rates, the PVCs or skip beats and stuff. And a lot of times pre-transplant, we'll spend a lot of time walking around basically taking our own pulse or, or taking it up here particularly, but but what we're feeling then is not a sensation brought on by nerves, but simply by pressure changes inside of those veins, vessels, and arteries. So to answer that question, then yes, you're going to feel your heart beating, but what you're feeling now is the exact same thing you felt before, which was just based on blood pressures, just based upon blood flow going through those arteries. So just like you did pre-transplant, if you feel like your heart rate's going up or down or skipping beats or whatever, just reach and hold your wrist, uh, touch your ankles if you want, top of your feet, but mainly as we typically would do it, you can just hold your neck like always, feel that blood flowing, and try to determine maybe on some sort of a watch or timer if and when that heart rate is elevated or too low or what have you. So it still is a great way of diagnosing or self-diagnosing yourself if there are any problems going on. I hope that answered that question pretty clearly. Just to recap, your nerve endings will be cut at transplant, but that will not affect you feeling your heart beat, but could affect your heart rates and could affect your sensation as far as pain in the chest there. Now, if this has helped you out in any way, I hope that you'll like, subscribe, and share this program. And I'd love to hear comments below. What effects have you noticed about your nerve endings being cut, if any? And if so, you know, how how's your heart rate? post-transplant. I know for most of us, it's kind of elevated after transplant for a time, and that's almost with good purpose. But let me know what your story is right here beneath the program. And I remind you again, go ahead over to the website. I'm going to put back on the screen as well as as remain in the show notes. Pick yourself up a Heart Warrior t-shirt and become a supporter of a great cause. Until next time, stay stronger, friends.